All right, this is crazy stuff. So I put channel two on that 12 volt feed at the sensor. Look at this. It's trying, it agrees with the meter. It's trying to bump up that voltage, 12 volts. Can't do it. It kind of bumps it up and decays. And if we put a test light on there from battery positive, so there's no short to ground. Put it right on here. Keep it at 12 volts. See, we have good communication. Everything's happy. Everything's good. If I unplug my test light, it stays. The voltage stays. How is that possible? So is it an internal module fault, or is there still a potential wiring fault here? Right there. See, it started glitching again. This is a cool capture. Boom, boom, boom. Just out of nowhere. This is really neat. Okay, so the next step, logical step here, is to get to this EBCM and put um, a probe right there to make sure that the signal here is also dropping out. Because if it's dropping out here, we're measuring at the steering wheel angle sensor. You know, could there be a, a bad connection at X200 pin 7? Potentially, but the multi-axis acceleration sensor, you see that's a straight wire, and that's also dropping out communication. Okay, so let's go to the EBCM. I'm suspecting the 12 volt driver in here is getting broken or intermittent. In that case it will need a new EBCM. But it's just a 12 volt feed when the key is on. So we can easily bypass that circuit. I'm not worried about that. But we want it, you know, a guaranteed diagnosis here before we do any bypass attempts or anything like that. So let's get to the EBCM. It's buried down here under this coolant reservoir. You can see the ABS pump. So you can see the wiring. There's the, the wiring harness. So let me get this coolant reservoir out of the way. We'll get a probe on here and then decide what to do next. Okay, so I got the coolant reservoir out of the way. And this little fitting right here is not happy. It's hissing. Okay, hopefully the plastic didn't crack there. I think it's okay. Here's the EBCM. Here's the connector. So what I want to do is unplug it. We'll find the correct wire, inspect the pins, plug it back in, and we'll see if we can reproduce this fault. Actually, before disturbing anything, I found a dark green wire that powers up those sensors. Let's just put another channel on the scope, turn the key on, and see if it drops out here. If it does, then we'll do a close inspection on the pins. If that checks out, it will need a new EBCM. Um, or if the owner wants, we can try a bypass for just for that ignition 12 volt circuit. Okay, so the network's actually awake. We, have, we do have a 12, good 12 volt feed right now. Let's start it up. So we need to recreate this fault. Will that 12 volt signal drop out? Traction light is on. Let's uh, reset all the codes. Says service to bill track. So clear DTCs. Clearing out the DTCs. There's still one code left. Let's see what that is. Still says control communication bus off. Let's look at the network. Oh, what? That looks like garbage, doesn't it? 
interesting. This is unbelievable. I'm doing a resistance check. Now we're up to 120 ohms. So now we have an open circuit in the network. What changed? Everything's plugged in. Steering wheel angle sensor. I did not touch the EBCM connector. And the yaw rate sensor, we didn't even get to that. So right now, the 12 volt feed looked fine, but we have an open circuit in the network. So, we need to go back to this diagram without disturbing too much, figure out which way is the brake. So the steering wheel angle sensor, that's convenient. We can measure the resistance of the multi-axis accelerometer, the yaw rate sensor, and we can measure towards the EBCM. So let's, uh, let's try that. We're already here. So I just unplugged the steering angle sensor. We're up to 3.6 mega ohms. Let's plug it back in. 120. Okay, perfect. So we just proved that this way the network is fine. This way towards the EBCM we're not fine. That's crazy. So we can go right to the EBCM, find these dark blue and light blue wires. It should be a twisted pair. Measure the resistance there. I don't want to touch X200 just yet. There could be problems at that connector. Let's measure the resistance here. If it doesn't agree with the resistance at the DLC, it's open circuit right now, then, you know, that's the, uh, the fork in the road. We're going after this connector or the actual EBCM. So at the EBCM, I was looking for the twisted pair, dark blue, light blue wires right there. And check it out, our resistance came back to 120. The steering wheel angle sensor is unplugged. So something here, right there, 120, I, I just barely touched the wires and it dropped out. Right there, open circuit. I'm just literally doing that. And, we're in, and this resistance is going all over the place. So let's get this connector off, see what's going on inside. Maybe they're loose pins. I don't see any other wiring damage. Right there, we're back in business, 120. So we're very close to the problem. These could be related. Question is, is the problem in here or in the harness? And how do you determine that easily? Open circuit, back in business, 120. And I I'll do a pull, pull on the wires, 120. Let them go. You can see it's jumping. Okay, let's check those pins. Let's get this connector unplugged. So have the connector off and the covers off. And it looks like someone's been here at some point. There is some dielectric grease on the pins. So what I want to do now is do a drag check on the network wires and that power wire. See if there's any spread pins, blow all this out, and then plug it in and see if the connection's uh, stabilized. Okay, so just doing a drag check on all these pins. Now some pins are not populated, so the network pins are numbers one, two, three, four, and five in the second row. Second row, one, two, three, there's four. It feels pretty loose, five. Extremely loose. Let's keep going. See, there, there's a good pin. That's a good pin. That one's empty. That one's empty. This one seems okay. That one's okay. Okay, okay. Empty, empty, empty. Okay. 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 So the network pins are extremely loose. Maybe someone was here probing with a fat probe and spread the pins and now we have two problems instead of one. 
Uh, what about that power wire, that 12 volt feed? That's this dark green one. Um, that one seems to be tight. So, we need to take off this plastic retainer, tighten up the two pins for the network wires, fix that problem, so it passes the uh, little tug test here. Then, the 12 volt feed, I'm still suspecting a bad driver in the module because the pin itself seems to be fine. So this is crazy. The more people that have touched this, the more problems were introduced. And we have an aftermarket steering wheel sensor now. Who knows how long that's going to last. So let me plug this in. We'll make sure the network is restored. And then we'll chase that 12 volt um, power feed problem. So the plastic retainer is removed. Now you can see the populated pins. These are the network pins spread wide open. Check the other ones. Tight, tight, tight. These are all good. That one's good. Fine, fine. Okay. So we just need to close up these two. So this problem I'm sure was built in by someone trying to test that network. And the 12 volt wire was never touched because well no one ever considered the possibility of that dropping out causing those sensors to go offline. So let me try to either extract these pins or just tighten them in place and make sure these pass the, uh, the drag check. Okay so I just took a pick and bent, just kind of did a little squeeze on the pins that way. And now, with the needle probe, there's the fourth pin. It's holding in there, and that's a nice drag. And pin number five. There it is. Nice drag, so I think that's good. Let's plug this back in, make sure we have our 60 ohms. Okay, so here's the proof of my pin repair. Now, we're at 120, I'm wiggling the wires, rock solid. So we've restored the network. So there are two bad spread pins at the ABS module. Now, let's repeat that experiment with the 12 volt signal, which what we are doing originally before we got sidetracked by this separate issue. Okay, so I think we're all set up. So we're on the 12 volt feed there. That's channel three. The channel one and two, I'm gonna make the can high and low. By the way, with the steering angle sensor plugged in, we're rock steady at 61 ohms. So we don't need that anymore for the meter. So let's see here. Channel four is going to be the power feed at the steering wheel angle sensor. And then channels one and two are pins 12 and 13 on the network. Okay, so I think we're all set now. Turn the key on. If I can find the key. There it is. Here we go. So now I should be happy key on, 12 volt signals are good, no check engine light, no traction light, let's start it up, so we're all happy right now, I'm hoping this thing will drop out soon, and I'm hoping that both channels drop out, well, I mean, either way, we'll see So right now the car is happy, everything's good. No dropouts yet. We'll let it run for a little bit. Hopefully it acts up. Well it's been a few minutes and it's happy. Oh, did you guys see that? It's not happy. <laughs> Sir, the build track light did pop on just now. Let's see what happened a few frames ago. Right there. 
boom 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 lots of communication and then you get this garbage so it's happy not happy this is where the ABS module is like hey where are you where are you and then that came back on both lines at the EBCM and at the steering wheel angle sensor so let me save this and then we'll uh, we'll see how to potentially fix this problem no parts required so we're at the EBCM and pins look good wiring looks good what happens if you just smack on it check this out see that see that dropout right there brilliant so internal EBCM problem not a connection problem and that will once it drops out it'll set the uh, all you know the communication codes so that's the 12 volt feed to the sensors so I'm trying to stress the connector There, there's our problem, intermittent. Now it's off, now it's on. So something's in, inside the board. It's just messed up. As if I just pull in the wire, no problems at all. It's, this is a module internal failure on that 12 volt supply to the sensors. So we proved that. Let me save save these captures. And then we'll find a way to, to bypass this thing. So the customer took his Buick LaCrosse. The diagnosis was complete and needs a new EBCM, you know, the ABS control module. As much as I was tempted to, to do the uh, Russian hack bypass, just give those sensors a 12 volt ignition feed and the car, I'm sure, would be fine. But it's not my car so we're gonna play by the rules we're gonna replace the part instead of doing any hack wiring um, bypass tricks so I'm sure that'll make some people happy I don't know <laughs> if it was my car I I'd, would I'd probably I would just do the you know the bypass I don't like ABS to begin with I've disabled it all my vehicles well only the Suzuki has ABS but uh, that was disabled 11 years ago so not worried about that but for customers, we'll fix it the right way, make it stock, and I'll let you know if he gets his money back from the other repair shop. We charge him like almost two grand to replace those two sensors and diagnostics and whatever. Uh, total, you know, they didn't do any diagnostics. It was a total parts cannon with aftermarket parts. It's terrible. Um, but uh, in part two, we'll install the new EBCM and program it and make sure the car is good to go.